this is Born 62, I'm Henrik Jus. January will be midsection month here on Born 62. The reason that I, and maybe you, and a lot of other people have been eating too much during Christmas, maybe even drinking too much, and it all comes down to that we probably would be carrying too much weight here in our midsection. So in January we will start working on the midsection so we will be ready for summer. Later on this month I'll begin to discuss diet, but right now we'll look at that six pack, or well, right now it's a one pack, but uh, how do we turn it into a six pack? If we need three or four months to, to get a six pack, we better start now. And if we're going to be ready for summer, we're going to start working on midsection now and start dieting too. So we will actually look good this summer. But um, today we'll talk about the six pack and how to train properly. A lot of people will probably say sit ups. Sit ups have been there since I was a kid in gym classes in the military and sports club, martial arts clubs. And Sadly, it's still being taught today and people believe that it will work your six-pack. It only works it as a stabilizer because what you do when you hook your feet onto something, you actually use the muscle that lifts the leg, brings the leg up to the torso to, to uh, do that bend. It's a hip hinge more than it's a bend. The function of your rectus abdominus, as they are called when not called six-pack, is to bend your spine, curve it, so your shoulders and your pelvis comes closer together. And you don't need to have your feet hooked under anything for that. You can do crunches and I'll show you crunches in a minute. But don't do six pack uh, sit-ups because inside your body you'll have several muscles that work to bring your legs up like this. When you're kicking or when you're running, these muscles work one of the time, all the time. The one that lifts your leg work as a prime mover, the other one as a stabilizer. So imagine running one leg at a time, bam, bam, bam. They will shift from one side to the other, from mover to stabilizer, from stabilizer to mover and so on. And that's what they do and they do it fine. But if you hook your feet onto something, you're using those muscles instead of your stomach muscles. And now comes the worst part. One of them is called psoas, and psoas is connected to your spine. So when you hook your feet and your body's on the ground, you have two firm points that won't move. So the only object that can move is actually your spine. So as you tire, instead of bending and using your abdominals, you'll actually curve your back because the source that is connected to your thigh bones and your spine will bring these two together and thereby curve your back. So if you've ever done sit-ups and ended up with a sore back, now you have the reason why. Sit-ups is not a good stomach exercise. It will work those muscles that pulls your legs up, but not in a very good way. If you want to work those muscles, do knee kicks instead because that will make them work the way they're supposed to work and not by fixing both your butt and your feet at one time so only your spine can move. So I'll show you crunches and I'll show you sit-ups and you can see the difference between the two. First off I'll show you a sit-up. In a regular sit-up your feet are hooked onto something like I'm using two dumbbells and you will hip hinge meaning that you will come down and come up erect like this. My stomach muscles are working as stabilizers. So if you say, well I can feel it in my stomach, it's because they are in a static contraction and that won't really build them the way you want them. What you will be working is your psoas and the other muscles that bring your knee and your shoulders together and that's not your stomach. So let's forget about moving our feet. Now I lie like this, and to do crunches, I simply come up like this. I use my stomach muscle, I never 
let my lower back leave the floor and I'm not concerned with high, how high up I come. What's concerning me is that I get a good contraction in my stomach. Why isn't my hands behind my head? Because there's no reason to. A lot of people put their hands here and what they actually do is they start pulling on their neck, which is hurtful to the neck and serves no purpose. You can have your hands on your chest if you like, or out here. I use them as a guide so I know that I come up to the, uh, approximately the same height every time. So I simply have them here and say, they need to touch my knees, but nothing more than my knees. How many crunches should you do? Well, some people can do one, some people can do five. In order to get a, six, a good six pack by summer, I think you should work up to at least 30 a day. A day, I said. You don't have to do 30 a day for six months, but you should start out there and when you get better at doing more, you can do it less times a week. So instead of doing 30 uh, divided three times, doing 10, rest, doing 10, rest, doing 10, and then you're finished, when you get to the point where you could do 30 in a row, well, you only need to do it every second day. When you get to a point where you can do 50 in a row, maybe you don't need to do it any more than two times a week. It's up to you. You can't all do it like anything else. So you don't need to do 50 a day, every day, all week. That would be too much and that would probably be counterproductive. So try it out. If you want that six pack by summer, now's the right time to start. Hi.